everyone, today we're going to be working on some lava bases. These are the bases I used for my Chaos Dwarf army. Um, I did them all in one big batch, so after I was done painting my models, I could just glue them on the bases. Uh, I'm going to be using MDF, um, but you can use this on any type of base. I just got these because I had to convert from squares. So I'm going to be using some super glue, uh, snips, and an X-Acto knife. And we're going to be using cork board. I have two thicknesses of cork board that I grabbed. Thin ones that were coasters, and a thick one I got at Walmart that was just a big sheet. It was for uh, making your own pin board, for, or posting board. So the first method I'm going to show you is with a small base. Um, what you can do is kind of cut around. Uh, it depends on if you want a sleek, uh, circular look or more of a ragged off the base type of a look. Uh, I'm doing this one uh, to show you a little bit about what the ragged would look like. Usually I'm going to tear it in half and uh, make it a little bit smaller and then you can create kind of a channel. Uh, for the lava to go through. On the small bases you're, you're not able to be near as creative just because of the it, you need to keep it flat so your model can stand on it correctly. Um, this is a one inch hole punch. I got this at Walmart because I wanted to get some really rounded corners. After some bending I able was to separate it enough to use some thin cork board in it. And what I'll show you here is this is a mess that I'm going to be using on my army um, but I did want to show you just tearing it up also. Uh, with these, although they're not quite an inch, it's very close, it's close enough. So you kind of tear it up and we're going to be able to make that same channel but this time with kind of crisper sides. To uh, adhere the cork board, I do recommend you use super glue and not uh, white glue or PVA glue um, because they're going to get a little bit rough with sculpting it later and it's it's pretty easy to separate if you don't use super glue. Um, I sped everything up so you're gonna see this whole video is start to finish and I try to keep it as short as possible but I didn't want to show the whole step so I sped it up pretty fast. But um, what I'm doing here is making like a mound. Um, you just kinda randomly place where you want it to be. A lot of my other bases are more flat, but this one is going to have a model on it that won't need a flat base, so I'm going to make it a little bit uh, taller in the middle. Uh, after you've gotten all this stuff glued down, we'll move to the next step, and uh, what we want to do is start clipping off that top corner. Uh, the top, you don't have to do this if you want more of a ledge, but I feel it looks a lot more natural if you're able to kind of negate some of that uh, top ledge. Cork works really good for, um, for simulating volcanic rock because it has that kind of grain to it. You can also notice, as I have on the top right, <laughs> since I'm not using a paint right now, the grain for the coasters is much more fine than this grain I'm using on the larger base. Um, and I did put some pieces of the smaller grain on there to kind of give it some variance. So right now I'm digging out channels. These are going to be where there's maybe like cracks or kind of lava flowing from inside. Now, I was for a little bit there using an X-Acto knife, and you can at your own peril, but I found myself really attacking <laughs> this base, uh, and I realized the X-Acto was probably not the safest way, so I kind of switched away from that, um, eventually. <laughs> um, but yeah, after um, quite a bit of digging, you can get kind of a more natural look to it. So now what I'm going to do is recycle those bits I just kind of left all over the table. Just putting some glue around the edges and we're going to sprinkle these random bits just all over it. Uh, giving a little bit more variance to it. Alright, as you can see here I primed them. I personally just use a flat primer. Um, I'm sure I'll make a video at some point on, on different primers, but you just want a flat black primer, uh, not gloss. Uh, so my first step on this is we're going to use a 50-50 mix of Abaddon Black and Mephiston Red to do a base coat. 
Now I will point out that uh, I'm doing this with an airbrush and it definitely is going to have a different effect with an airbrush than a brush, although you can do this with a brush. Um, you'll just need to use dry brushing techniques um, and I'll show that in the very last step when we get to the highest color how you do that with a um, just a brush and not an airbrush. Um, yeah, at this point I'm putting a heavy coat on the bottom of this just to kind of base out that that uh, main color and it needs to be pretty heavy because red is, is real um, notorious for not wanting to show <laughs> once it dries and you can see it drying in real time right there and how it's immediately becoming a little bit darker alright this is after um, it's dried. I was messing with my colors on my camera a bit, so it didn't get that much brighter. <laughs> but we're going to use um, Fist and Red here to kind of highlight everywhere in the middle, basically. I'm also going to line the channels. The next step up is going to be Troll Slayer Orange. I'm going to be using this and kind of hitting the spots I hit with the red earlier, um, but also not hitting them on purpose because you don't want an even gradient from low to high everywhere. You want it to be a little random. As you can see, I was spraying it a bit earlier. Um, one thing is with an airbrush, is that the lighter color you get, the closer to white, the more um, splattery a paint will become. So I did use um, some matte uh, clear paint with it so that it would spray a little bit better. Uh, this last one is actually Uriel Yellow. I forgot to put it up on my shelf as I was painting it. This is going to be my finest final airbrush highlight. Again, I'm going to kind of go where I hit with the orange, but I'm also going to try to do some random bits not where I was on the orange. I want to keep this, uh, I guess, as random as you can. The next step, you can see um, how you would do this with a brush if you'd like. I find spraying anything close to white almost impossible with an airbrush. So what I decided to do is mix some Uriel Yellow, this is the color I used earlier if you needed a reference, and some uh, Ceramite White. And I got a really, really, really dry brush, and then I started hitting some of the middle of the yellow bits just to bring up a little bit of a highlight. At this point we are done with the lava for now. Um, I'm going to get some Abaddon Black, and this is going to be a very watery solution. We're not really painting, we're not really dry brushing. I don't know what I'd call it, it's more like a sloppy paint. Uh, what we want to do is get all this top part. Uh, anytime you're doing OSL, or object source lighting, you have to think about where the light would go. And since these are all flat, there's there's no reason that any of that glow would hit the very top, only the sides. So we want to make sure that all the absolute top shelf parts are covered in black. Uh, this is going to uh, make it look much more realistic later on. Once that dries, I'll get some Dawnstone, and this is going to be a dry brush. I got a ton of paint on my brush and then wiped all of it off. And then we're, I would just beat the mess out of it. Um, when you're dry brushing, I find that what you can do is get almost all your paint off and then keep going. If you think you have all your paint off, you don't. And just assault it. Uh, just, I'm very rough and I destroy a brush in a couple sessions, but it really gives you a, a much better dry brush. Alright, this next step is a little different. I'm using some Pledge Floor Care. Uh, <laughs> this is a paint trick I learned from my dad, who was an artist, and um, it's basically a gloss medium, um, but it works 
really well and back when I used Walmart paints when I first started painting I used this to thin and fix the paints and it works very well and it's basically a gloss medium uh, and if you do a lot of painting I say pick one up you'll never run out <laughs> I'm painting all the all the uh, lava bits and I'm purposely making this really thick I want some waves in it the things you usually avoid I want now I want some funky texture but clear on top because um, a very flat would not make it look like lava it would just kind of look like water I guess and that's pretty much it uh, here's the finished base I also have some pictures of some other bases I did in this one session that are a little bit flatter these are going to carry my trains uh, and things that won't fit that well on it. Um, it's a fun project. Uh, it doesn't take too long and you put some good music on you can crank out a whole army in not too long. Well thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Bye!